Hi everyone, I think we're recording. Hi everyone, so I have promised you um, my tips to assessing an educational program and to make it really easy for you guys and it's what I'm all about. I'm always about bringing it down to the, you know, down to the basics to let's see what happened. But before we go any further, I want to share some statistics with you. So I've done some research into the National Quality um, the Education and Care National Quality Authority, so a CEQA. So I've looked at their national registers and I've been looking at um, services that their past ratings and assessment, their latest rating and assessment, and just to see where they are. So 90% of services that I looked at, and I did do a random assessment, I did do a random check, 90% um, of services have gone from working towards remained at working towards or have gone from meeting to working towards, particularly in quality areas one and seven. So we're looking at, we've been looking at a decline in quality in family daycare based on the ratings and assessment for those two quality areas in particular. There are some services that have gone down in um, like staffing and community. There are some that have gone up in other areas. So it's a little bit, you know, it's kind of all over the place if we were to measure every every national standard. But the, the standard that I want to talk about today predominantly is standard number one. So 90% of services that I did a sample for have gone down or remained at working towards. So we want to have some really good basic skills around measuring the quality, the quality of the educational program for children. Okay, I think I'm still recording. I don't, I don't know, I'm gonna just keep going and see. Okay, so I've got a PDF download here. So what I've done, people, when I say to people, we're gonna measure your service by the law, or we're gonna measure your program by the law, or we're gonna do this by the law, people go, oh my God, she's gonna use the law. The law is not that bad. For me, the law is actually a clarification. The law brings it down to that real basic, real, what is it that I need to have? So I've got this PDF download here for you. So what I've done, I've taken out from the Education and Care National Law and the Education and Care National Regulations, what relates to the Education and Care Program. So this is it. There's more information in the standards, obviously, and there's a whole range of things. Now, don't be fooled. Sometimes two pieces of paper can mean a lot. So don't be fooled. But this is all you really need to measure the educational program on to make sure, firstly, that it's compliant. If your program is not compliant, then you will never move forward in the in the national standards. It's really that simple. And you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out. That's why I make it really simple. So this is where, if you are going to, to, an, to assess an educational program, whether you're the approved provider and you're assessing the educators that are registered with you if you're assessing their program if you're an educator and you want to assess your own program if you're an educational leader and you want to assess the the educational programs for the service that you're working towards this would be the tool that i would start with now as many of you know i've just taken over a long daycare center and the program was 80% non-compliant. So I gave all the staff this little handout to figure out where they sat. If the staff don't get it, then all I'm doing is knocking my head against the wall by, by telling them what they need to do. They need to get it in order for them to move with me from a compliance perspective, from a quality perspective. So as leaders, we want, and as educators even, you need to really understand this in order to move forward. So it's not like you're relying on my opinion or your boss's opinion or somebody else's opinion it really is around what the base legislation tells us that we need to do so i'm adding this to the video free download download it use it whatever so there's information in this document which will tell you what you need to be measuring your program against so let me get my pen so when it says that children's programs need to be based on their needs their needs, interests, skills, abilities, and programs also need to show, and I'm going to underline that, show children's learning over time. 
So what I want you to do, and this is as simple as all get out, what I want you to do is imagine yourself as a parent and you say to an educator or you log into whatever app they use, like I know people are using Story Park and this, that and the other thing. What I want you to do is choose a child and ask yourself you ask yourself those questions. Do and not not talking to the educator. That's not about talking to the educator because the educator in their head, and we all do it. We all know the information in our head. I did that because that child liked. I did that because that child asked for. I did that. But there's no point in keeping it in your head when the regulations say that we have to keep a range of documentation based on da 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 da. So. Get, your, get a program, choose a child at random, whoever's enrolled to say da, 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 da. Molly, I'm going to choose Molly. Does Molly's educational program show her needs, interests, skills and abilities throughout the observations and the reflections? And does it show her learning over time? So you should be able to have a look at Molly's program, which could be three months worth, six months worth, 12 months worth, five years worth even, you should be able to sit down with that educational program and determine whether or not you can see Molly in your head and what Molly's interests are. If you can't answer those questions, then there's gaps in the program. So you've got to be able to determine. So, okay, I can see that Molly is interested in blocks. I can see that Molly is interested in role play. I can see that Molly is it because the observations would dictate that. I can see that Molly can do because developmental records would dictate that. I can see that Molly is able to do because again, that would be your developmental records and that would also be your, uh, uh, your observational records or this ability section could even be sitting into your reflections. Molly is able to, Molly can, Molly will, Molly does, Molly likes, Molly da da. So this all sits into your reflections here. So if you can't see this over the course of the time that Molly's been there, then there are gaps in your program. It really is that simple. How you plug those gaps might be a little bit different and every gap needs its own strategy, obviously. And does, when you look at Molly's program over that course of the time, whether that's one month, two months, three months, five years, whatever that is, does it show her learning? So maybe you've got observations that show Molly trying to crawl and then you've got observations that show her trying to pull herself up on furniture and then you've got observations show her getting on a bike and da da da. So do, do those observations show her learning over a period of time? So that's what you need to be looking at. And it, this brings it down to the real bare minimum. If you can't measure your, your program against this, well, not if you can't. If your program is not meeting this, then it won't be meeting the national standards. So there, there's no doubt about that because the legislation is your benchmark. So I'm going to leave you with that. If you need any questions or if you've got anything, just I, I'm going to put the link as always in here where you can jump on and ask me any questions and see where you're going. A program cycle, it's actually really easy. There's some time management considerations, obviously, but make sure that your documentation, your reflection, your planning cycle, everything that you do contains this information. And if you can't answer this information about Molly as a sample child, if you can't answer this information, then you need to go back and have a look at what's missing in your educational program or your educator's educational program. Or again, if you're the educational leader, what does that look like for you? So this information will serve every role in, a, in an education and care setting. And regardless of whether it's family day care, long day care, occasional care, um, out of school hours care, this is the foundation of the program that needs to be met based on the legislation. So again, let's go back to basics. Let's have a little measure. Again, if you need anything, I'm here. Um, hopefully we'll talk again real soon. Take it easy. Enjoy COVID, you folks. See ya. Bye.